we said that energy expenditure has a high inter-individual variability. So how can we measure how many calories one person spends? Well, we do have a way to do it with high precision, but unfortunately it's tremendously impractical and also quite expensive. You have to put a person into an insulated chamber so you can measure the amount of heat released by that person to perform all of his different activities. This method is what we call direct calorimetry. An easier way to determine energy expenditure is by indirect calorimetry. Here you only need a device to measure how much oxygen a person consumes to perform an activity, and from that you can calculate with acceptable precision how much energy was spent. If you also measure how much carbon dioxide is produced during the same activity, and you divide it by the amount of oxygen that was consumed, you can also estimate substrate utilization, that is, how much of the energy came from carbs, how much from fats, and how much from proteins. And this calculation is called respiratory quotient, and it's another fairly easy test. You just need to measure the amount of oxygen inhaled and the amount of carbon dioxide exhaled while performed a physical activity. Understanding why we can calculate energy expenditure and substrate consumption just by measuring oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide consumption is fairly easy, but requires some biochemistry and goes beyond the scope of this course. For our purposes, just remember that we can use a little device to measure what we inhale and exhale, and from that we can calculate how much energy we spend. By integrating indirect calorimetry measurements from a lot of subjects performing different activities, we also have built some tables that give us an indication of how much energy is approximately spent to perform different physical activities. For example, we know that brisk walking for 30 minutes burns about 150 calories, heavy weight lifting burns more than 300 calories, and watching television burns less than 50. The way I see it, these tables are of limited interest and tend to downplay the importance of physical activity maintaining energy balance. According to this table, for example, we would need to run more than half an hour to just offset the calories of one candy. Quite frustrating if we see it like that. What if I need to burn a Big Mac? The truth of the matter is, these tables only tell us the energy spent to perform the activity itself. But we already know that the effect of physical activity on energy expenditure goes much beyond that. We keep spending energy even once the activity itself ends to maintain and repair tissues. And on top of that, we also increase basal metabolism in general, and therefore energy expenditure at all times. We have also built some more general formulas that can be used to roughly estimate our energy requirements based on our gender, height, weight, age, and level of physical activity. The two most widely used formulas to estimate energy requirements in healthy individuals are the Harris-Benedict formula and the mifflin sangier formula. Let me just show you how these equations work with an example using the Harris-Benedict formulas. The first thing we need to do is estimate basal metabolism using these two equations, one for men and the other for women. W is the weight in kilograms, H is the height in centimeters, and A is the age in years. Suppose we have a man and a woman of 35 years of age, 170 centimeter tall and weighing 65 kilograms. We substitute these values in the equations that we obtain for the man 13.75 times 65 kilograms plus 5 times 170 centimeters minus 6.76 times 35 years of age plus 66 equals 1573 calories per day. For the woman, 9.56 times 65 kilograms plus 1.85 times 170 centimeters minus 4.68 times 35 years of age, plus 655 equals 1,427 calories per day. These are estimates of their basal metabolism. Next, we want to estimate their total energy requirement, and for that, we have to multiply these values by a factor depending on their level of physical activity, according to these instructions. Little to no exercise, Basal metabolism times 1.2, light exercise 1 to 3 days per week, basal metabolism times 1.375, moderate exercise times 1.55, heavy exercise times 1.725, and very heavy exercise twice per day, extra workouts, basal metabolism times 1.9. Let's suppose that our man is sedentary while our woman is moderately active. 
his energy requirement would then be 1573 calories times 1.2 equals uh, 1,888 calories per day, while hers will be 1,427 calories times 1.55, which is a conversion factor, equals 2,212 calories per day. Remember that these formulas are just the best fit of the average indirect calorimetry data obtained from many subjects in a population, and they provide just a rough estimate of the energy requirements for specific individuals. Furthermore, they only can be applied if the weight is normal, because they are energy requirements for maintenance. If a person needs to lose or gain weight, he will need less or more energy than what the formula calculates. In general, if a person does not have a healthy weight, these formulas cannot be calculated on the actual weight, but can be calculated on the desirable weight, unless the difference between actual weight and healthy weight is too large.